Um, so today we will talk about uh, SFCC jobs. Uh, first, um, the topics that we will cover in the sessions are the jobs overview. Uh, we will see what uh, this job means and um, why we should use jobs. Also, we will see how to create job and uh, we will uh, see what the does the step mean and uh, the type of job steps, also the flaws, and we will see how to import and export jobs. Um, and finally, we will uh, see a job example. Uh, first of all, job overview. Um, the jobs are tasks or base of uh, functionalities uh, that should be running automatically in specific time, maybe uh, recurring in a specific period or run at once in a specific day. Uh, also, jobs can uh, run manually, not uh, automatically based on schedule. Um, examples that we should think about jobs when we are working on um, we should think about jobs when we need to import export data and specific schedule uh, for example daily weekly or when we need to synchronize uh, when we need to synchronize data with third party for example when we have orders in sfcc and we need to synchronize the orders with the other third parties like uh, cyber source uh, for the for confirmation or payment data also, we can use jobs in order to clean all data, for example, every week. Uh, we have sometimes custom objects. We need them to store specific data that's related to specific functionality. And uh, we may need uh, to clean this data, for example, every week in order to not have large records and which we are uh, no longer need them. Uh, also, for backup purposes, we can uh, use jobs. We have uh, custom jobs, uh, for example, to send order status email or uh, order confirmation email. For example, the jobs we have run um, every five minutes in order to check the recently placed orders and uh, send order status email and order confirmation email to the customers who place these orders. Also, we have uh, jobs in order to send the change password email when the password about to expire for the customers uh, for the customers. Uh, we will see how to create job. If we go to the business manager here, um, we can access jobs from uh, administration, uh, operations and jobs. Uh, to create a new job, we click here. We have to specify the ID of this job, for example, this job. And we should add description uh, about this job the aim of this job, um, this is this job. Also, we can choose the priority of the job if it's normal or high. Then we click a create. Here is a general overview about this job. And here's the schedule and history. Uh, we should enable the job in order to be able to automatically uh, run the job and trigger it. Uh, regarding the trigger, we can set the trigger to be once, so the job will run in specific time, or it can be a recurring interval. In this case, the job will be running in specific period, for example, every uh, 10 minutes, every 10 uh, months. Also, we can specify the days that the job will run on. And um, finally, we have here a uh, job history. Um, here, the old uh, executions of this job will be displayed. Also, the logs will uh, be available in order to see the result of all the executions and um, if there is any error to handle. We have here a resource tab. In this resource tab, we can select the resource that we need to look while the execution of our job in order to prevent other jobs uh, from modifying these um, resource. For example, if we are working in uh, modifying order data, we can uh, here book um, order um, from being modified by other uh, jobs till the end of execution of this job. Uh, the main functionality is job steps. Job steps steps contains the main functionality of the job that um, contain the logic that the job will handle. Uh, we have two types of steps. We have the out of the box steps and we have custom steps. Uh, when I click configure step, I can see the type of all available steps for out of the box steps. If we need to see all available um, steps, we can go to this link. 
here is uh, here are all the steps that Salesforce provided. Uh, we can choose the step based on the requirement or the functionality that we are going to use. For example, if we are thinking of exporting catalog, we can use uh, step export catalog. We can see the information about this step by clicking on the step itself. We will use execute pipelines. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we have here execute pipeline in all the projects because we were depending on pipelines. Um, but we are no longer using pipelines, so this one is deprecated. We switched to use execute script module, but I found that even execute script module becomes deprecated in order to uh, use custom steps that we will see now. To create custom steps, we have a file called um, step types. It could be a JSON file or XML file, depending on um, the type of files that we are preferring to use. Um, here we have step types, script module step, and this is the custom step that we are going to create. We create this step based on the functionality that we need, and if there is uh, no out-of-the-box step is already created. Uh, for example, um, this uh, step should start by custom because it's a custom step. And uh, this step will execute the logic that's implemented inside this module, uh, especially the function called execute. Uh, to add parameters for this um, step, here the list of parameters. For example, we have parameter called action, parameter called verbus, and the type of each parameter, and if it's required, uh, if we need to see this in uh, business manager, okay. let's check here. We have custom. Uh, this file should be added in, um, ca in cartridge that's already in cartridge path. So to upload the, this step, if we can check custom dot, we can see all the custom steps that we already added. For example, this one called cleanup files. Here as a step. We can add ID, we can add description, and here's the parameter that we added. For example, action parameter, and it's required. Also, verbose of type Boolean, and it's not required. Also, the same for all parameters. So, this is the custom step. If we need to see the types of or the elements that we can use inside this JSON file. Here are uh, mentioned all elements and the description of each one and notes about it. For example, the name of the parameter if it's required and many other options to use. Uh, for XML, we have example already added in documentation about XML uh, step types. For example, this custom uh, step and the description about it. The parameters is added this way. We have parameter name, type, and if it's required, and any other options. Um, this is added this way. Okay, let's create a new step here. I, I will create a script, secret script module step with ID that's called step one. And the module that will execute is, let's say, before creating real steps and working with them, I um, I will uh, check how the steps are executed and what's the process that we uh, check which step should be executed first. So we have to see first job flows. The flow controls the sequence in uh, which job steps are executed. The flow is represented here in job by, by this box. This box is contain the flow. So each job uh, should contain at least one flow and each flow should contain at least one step. Uh, we have two types of flows. We have uh, sibling parallel flows and we have sequential flows. 
For example, if I need to add the parallel flow, I can add sibling flow from here and configure another step. Let's uh, choose it from TypeScript module. And call it step two. Let's say that will execute this script. These are two steps. These steps will uh, be executed in parallel because they are um, added in parallel, uh, parallel uh, flows. Um, the execution will start from left to right. So we first, we, uh, the system will execute step one, then the system will uh, go to execute step two, but uh, it does not wait until step one is done. We use this type of flows, for example, when we need to download, the, for example, uh, order data or product data to import it in the second flow. So here we are downloading the needed data and these data are not depending on each other. So there is no worries to um, execute both at the same time. But if we add a sequential flow here, this is the second type of flows, which is sequential flow. This flow will be executed after the execution of first flow is done. Let's add another script here. Step, let's say script module. This is the um, sequential flow. So first, step one and step two will be executed. And after finishing these uh, steps, uh, step three will be executed uh, because step three may need data from the first flow or uh, it uh, should wait until the, um, the first flow is done. The execution will be from up to bottom. So first flow, this one is uh, executed. Then the second flow will be executed. Um, Every flow should have a scope. The scope could be for organization or it could be for specific sites. Um, we can choose the site from site list that's already implemented on the sandbox. This is the flows, the job of flows. And the job can contain both sequential and parallel flows. Uh, each flow should, um, can have a scope for organization or site specific. Um, before going to job import and export, is there any question? Okay, uh, so let's talk about job export and import. From administration operations, we have here uh, job export, import and export. In order to export job, we uh, should click export and then add the file name that we will export the jobs in. And for import and uh, for import uh, the jobs, uh, we should at first upload the file that we are going to import, which is XML file that contains the jobs. And then we click import and choose that file to import it. If there is uh, no validation error, then the file will be imported. Um, now we will uh, take an example for a real job. Um, we have already created a job called Cyber Source Conversion Report Job. Um, in this job, uh, this job aims to update order status which are in review to accept or reject state by using a conversion details REST service. Um, so we have this job in job steps, we are depending on an execute script module. And this step will execute module called this one. And uh, it will call function called conversion detail report inside this script. And the, fu the function that we are calling should be exported. Here is the reject implemented. We, um, you are using uh, search orders in order to retrieve a list of order with uh, export status, uh, ready to export and order confirmation status uh, not confirmed. And we have a custom attribute called decision manager status, uh, which we add an order level. 
this one, so personal decision manager status, we initially put uh, this value as review while placing the order. Uh, while uh, placing the order and then we are calling the service in order to get uh, the new decision if it's uh, this order is accepted all or uh, rejected so we retrieve the list of orders here and then we prepare the request in order to call a rest service the service is already um, here is the service The service is already implemented on REST service in it. Um, we create the request and set the URL that we are going to call. Here is the service URL that we are calling. Um, parameters that we are sending with the, the URL are start time and end time for that report. When we fill all uh, request details and authentication part, we will send the request and in response, we have a JSON file that contains um, the order numbers that has changed on uh, status. For example, this order has an origin decision review and this decision changed to accept. We may have other orders that uh, have changed from review uh, to reject. So when we send the request to the service and get that response, we will parse the response and we will uh, check the orders that we retrieved uh, in response and compare them with the orders that we have on the following um, order iterator that we stored in HashMap. And we compare if the order that comes on uh, the response is exist on that uh, HashMap, then we update this order. Uh, for example, here we are uh, set the custom uh, attribute decision manager status to accept if the response come with status accept and the same if it's reject. And we are doing a custom logic for um, each of these two statuses. It's important to add as many as logs on uh, the job um, for um, catching any other errors that may happen on uh, production or on, on other environments. So the merchants and any one administrator who use uh, the jobs can understand the exact issue and can see in which part of code the issue happened. So we should add logs for each uh, functionality, each part of the functionality. For example, info logs here, and in case of errors, we should also log the error that happens. Also, we have a tab here called failure handling um, to specify the action that should happen if there is any failure happen on job. Also, for notification tab, um, this can be enabled and we can add emails to send for uh, specific people who are going to catch the errors and uh, fix them in case of reproduction. This notification uh, can be set or configured uh, usually on production, not on uh, uh, develop uh, development and uh, developer sandboxes. Um, so this is all what I was about saying about jobs. Um, if you have any question, please let me know. Okay, I'll, if there is no question, thanks for attending. Goodbye.